Well, Gordon, it's been a long journey, you know, but uh, where did it start? When I was <clears throat> chairman of the Waikato Conservation Board, and before every meeting, oh, you were on the board, That's right. weren't you? I used to give a little homily about a topic that I thought would set the tone for the meeting. And this particular one in 91, I was thinking around how f farmers, for whom I've got a lot of respect, were actually doing great jobs on their farms. And they needed to be recognised for what they were doing. And I said, this is an interesting point, they used a different word. I said there needs to be a farm conservation award. Because I was on the conservation board. Um, and so we set up a little committee with uh, Theo Gerritsen in charge um, to sort of develop the idea and he talked with Environment Waikato who recognised that their responsibilities towards the environment tied in very closely with what we were saying. So after a year's work, um, and I always thankful to Theo for all that work. Um, we changed the name to Farm Environment Award, which of course encompasses everything, um, and set off on this journey. That's, that's how we started. And we wanted something that was all embracing uh, with the idea that the environment is not just the pretty, pretty things we live in, but it is everything we live in, uh, embraces uh, social, economic, ecological, the lot. It gave reality on the ground to the term which was just beginning to come into vogue, sustainability. The judges had to include a farmer because with all respect to other professions, it often takes a farmer to talk to a farmer. You talk in the same language, what I call, you kick the dirt. Um, and you can say things to a fellow farmer that if a, an authority said it, would really get their backs up. Whereas a fellow farmer can say, God, you've got a bit of a problem down there, haven't you? But then it had to include people from as wide a range of backgrounds as we could manage. Bloody hard work, but it was fascinating because as you went round, every one of you was looking at utterly different types of farms, vastly different types of farms, and that broadened our horizons. There's no doubt about it. Farmers would say afterwards, I think they still do, gee, that was a great experience. Um, but, you know, I'm doing this differently now. I'd, I'd never thought of that. The winning, I think, is only just icing on the cake. It's not the core. When one of the judges, who was a very, very good uh, soil, um, well, nutrient advisor, he always went round with his spade and he took a spit out of the ground, so deep and so wide, looked at it, he would talk for half an hour about what he was looking at with a group of farmers around him absolutely fascinated by what he could read into one spit of soil. Now, that opened a lot of eyes. The difficulty was to try to get people to think, what will be the long-term effect of what I'm doing? It may not be me. That's when we sort of invented this... Uh, phrase the hundred year rule was just think when you're doing something if somebody went on doing this for a hundred years that's only four generations um, what will be the effect i think in accepting an award you also accept responsibilities and amongst those responsibilities is a vision you need to have 
for the future of farming in New Zealand. Farming is going to go on forever, as long as people are around. Farming has to go on on a sustainable basis. Your task that follows winning this award is to be the ambassador of this idea wherever you go in your future careers, whether as farmers or in other spheres of interest. Never forget that you are, that you have at the back of your mind that you won an award for sustainable farming in New Zealand.